Welcome back to Off the Hook, episode five here at Capco Park. Andrew Lynn joined by Wyatt Copelman. Fans here got two games of free baseball, really, with several extra innings in both of the contests. Unfortunately, the Chinooks on the short end of the stick in both contests, seven to six. Take a look back to last Friday's game where the game was suspended due to heavy fog that loomed over the outfield. Two innings of play, three runs given up in the top of the first inning from Nate Aber there. We picked up today with Weston Muir on the bump. A dynamic performance, really, an eight innings pitched with just four hits on one earned run, seven strikeouts, and a pair of walks. However, that just wasn't enough for the boys at home today. Yeah, Andrew, Weston Moore really came in strong, a very dominant performance out of the bullpen, pitched eight innings, really that could have counted as a start, matching Tommy Lamb with seven strikeouts as we saw yesterday in Green Bay. Tommy Lamb's made some progression. He picked up the loss, unfortunately, but Weston Moore really had himself a day, and that really just turned it over to some more solid pitching later on, but the Chinooks, they just did not have enough to get over the hump. Griffin Dorshing really found a four-leaf clover, popped one up into shallow left field. That actually took a bounce to get runners in scoring position, but the Lakeshore Chinooks really just were not able to get enough. Not enough, but great hitting once again from Jackson Gray and Colin Matthews. Jackson Gray continuing that hot bat with another two-run bomb, which seems like it's from, you know, familiar. You know, every game he's doing something with that bat on the power end. Just talk about, you know, that nice production from the middle of the lineup for the Chinooks. Yeah, Jackson Gray really brings a lot to the table with his sweet swing. All conference honors in the Conference USA this season for Western Kentucky. Had a team high batting average, led the team in hits, runs. This guy is really the complete package offensively. And that's what we've seen here at Capco Park over the past week, Andrew. Just the home run horn going off and off and off. I'm surprised it hasn't broken yet, but Jackson Gray is certainly going to have to get some help from his Chinooks teammates if it's going to be a, a better season going down the stretch here. Nathan Aid was helpful with that, that RBI base knock into right field that brought home a couple runners, but um, the Chinooks are just going to have to, to look for more. It's got to be different guys. They have a lot of talent. They're just going to have to continue to work it. And then tied 6-6 Wyatt, Jay Harry up to the uh, plate for Fond du Lac and just gave that uh, little knock into the outfield, which put them up and was eventually the, the game-winning game -winning run for Fond du Lac. Yeah, the Doc Spiders, they relied on Jay Harry a lot in the previous series before the postponement due to fog, and Jay Harry was just coming in clutch yet again. It was a 6-6 ball game in the top of the 11th, and then next thing you know, the Chinooks just saw one that cracked into the right field, and all of a sudden they were looking at a 7-6 deficit they weren't able to overcome, and this is a dangerous Doc Spiders lineup, second in the Northwoods League in team batting average, and they also lead the league and hits as well. So for the Doc Spiders, they really just unleashed their wrath on the Chinooks late, and that's what was really able to burn Lakeshore with not being able to come back with their own offense. Yeah, game two, similar situation on the short end of the stick, like I just mentioned minutes ago. Joe Glassy on the uh, hill, replaced by Ben Cruikshank, just unable to get things going. What do you see on both sides of the ball. Yeah, I think Joe Glassy came in, lost control of the strike zone initially, and just hadn't had the start that he did against Kalamazoo when they lost one nothing last week here at home. Joe Glassy came out, pitched a scoreless outing, and then the Chinooks just fell behind one nothing late. Um, the Chinooks did offer a lot of great relief pitching. Ben Cruikshank really stepped in a different role today, wearing that different cap. Did strike out five, including back-to-back -back in the middle innings, and hopefully Ben can continue to provide that for not only the Chinooks this season, but also for Kent State as he's transferring from Missouri State. And of course, you saw Jim Jarecki come in we didn't think we'd see him for that long, but then the Chinooks rallied late with four in the ninth, or the eighth, excuse me, and then that really just put him out there again and just not able to keep the Doc Spiders quiet, however. Four, inning, four runs late, excuse me, but back to that uh, Kai Murphy home run reliable hitting from him throughout the course of the year and finally got one to go deep. Yeah, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago when we really got this going here. Kai Murphy, the Pac-12 product of Arizona State, the son of Brewers bench coach Pat Murphy. So the hitting definitely goes in his DNA. He sent one to right field over the fence into Lake Michigan to lead things off in the fifth. But they're going to need more of a spark from him and Jackson Gray. And I think Kai Murphy is just going to continue to do wonders down the stretch of his career as he potentially gets drafted next year as well. Well, a lot of fog delays, but today we got both games done. What was going to be seven innings turned into much more free baseball, like I said. Well, tomorrow, Lakeshore hits the road to Final Lock for the second game of the home and home series with the first pitch at 635. For Wyatt Copelman, I'm Andrew Lynn. Thanks for tuning in.